Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Today, we're gonna have a match between Bly and Bomber here on Thunderbird The Ladder Edition. This is from the Asus Rogue group stages of 2019. Haven't seen Bomber in a while, so I figured I'd cast it. And Sniper Monkey suggested it, so hey, let's go ahead and get right on into it. Top left hand corner is the Blue Zerg player, Bly. And in the bottom right, He's red, he's Terran, and you know him as Bomber. Alright man, Bomber has been around for a very long time, has a lot of accolades to his name. One of the best Terran players ever to play StarCraft 2. Just go look him up. Look him up on Liquipedia, spend some time just looking through, trying to find old games of his from like 2012, 2013. And you'll see what we're talking about here. He's just one of the great, great Terran players of all time. Just beautiful from top to bottom. Love to see more of him. And then Bly, he's just one of those EU Zergs, man. Really aggressive, loves his lings a lot. Really familiar with how to win versus Terran. And I think he's going to give Bomber pretty much everything he can handle today. Bomber has the better resume, but Bly's been more active recently. Is more familiar with the meta. And is just crazy enough that I think he might throw Bomber off his game a little bit. And that's what we're here to see, right? We're here to see weird stuff. Bly is definitely one of those players that will give us the interesting games. Bomber looks like he's going to Reaper expand without the SCV scout. First Reaper is on the way. His name is Eggman, a.k.a. Robotnik. This letter was given to the Military Academy by Mengsk, alongside the subject in question. The word Pygnus has now been banned in Dominion's territory, and those who repeat it will suffer the same consequences as this man. Except me, of course. What the heck? What does Pig Pingus have to do with... Robotnik. I don't know. I don't know if about enough about Zelda lore to really be educated on this, but it's all good. It's all good. It's all good in the hood. Bly is going to go for the Queens first before he throws down his third hatchery. The question is yes. He's going to get his Queens first. He's not being too super greedy here, as there's definitely a Reaper on the way. And the Reaper, is he playing defense? Mm, that is the problem with the SCB scouting. You're not sure if there are Lings coming or not. And if there are Lings coming, then you want to stay home. But if there aren't Lings coming, you just move across the map as normal. So yeah, Bomber decided instead of sending an SCV across, he's just going to waste a bunch of time here on this Reaper. Looking for those lings that aren't coming, because Bly is absolutely not going for the first early pool into Zerglings. He's throwing down his third hatch at about 2.30, which is again earlier than I like to, but hey, it's all good, man. He is well saturated here at 23 workers. I like to get another couple workers out before my third goes down, but it's really just a question of preference and what you think you need. Right now, the Overlord just sees the command center is about to complete. So it's definitely not a one-basing Terran. Anyway, so might as well get, to get down to third base as early as you can. Queens are already out. And a Roach Warren coming up very fast for Bly. This feels very much like one of those two and a half, three-ish base Roach Ravager attacks that Terran has a really hard time holding. I've seen really good Terran players lose to this. I've definitely seen Polt lose to it on stream recently. And uh, it's hard to do. So these Lings show up, actually, just late. Just right later than you think they do. They actually get inside the main base. They get a full scout off. They're going to delay construction on that third command center. And yeah, super sneaky, super sneaky slow Lings that weren't there to defend against the Reaper. They're like, might as well do something about it. And are they going to deny... They're not going to delay construction on the... Oh, just a tiny bit on that command center. And the Reaper comes in and the Ling gets killed. So, I don't know, just a perfect scout. I mean, as a Zerg player, you got to feel good about that. Perfect, perfect scout. Seeing what's going on here. Second uh, second factory here from Bomber, though. That's interesting. There was no additional gas, so there's nothing to indicate a second factory would go down here from Bomber. So, Vly, I wonder if he's anticipating Bio. And it is going to be more of a mech style thing. But either way, there are roaches. They are pushing across the map here. Are there drones coming with this, too, on purpose? What is happening right now? Why are these drones coming? Bly, you're a crazy person. Teach me your ways of being crazy. Yeah, he's done droning. This is definitely a Roach Ling super all-in attack. I think the drone that drone's going back home anyway. Yeah, this is going to look really scary for Bomber. He is throwing up a bunker, but I don't think it's going to be done by the time the Roaches show up here. Third base, again, not getting saturated. That is the key here. We've got Lings on the way. We've got Roaches on the way. I assume they'll turn into Ravagers at some point here. Does he have the resources for that? Uh, yeah, he does, actually. But it'll just Ling Roach, man. Just Ling Roach at four and a half minutes. The bunkers aren't going to come up. The natural base is going to go down. And Bly already has three bases. And look, they didn't even wall off. 
The Lings are getting in here too. Bomber is not prepared for this Ling Roach attack by any means. 11, 12, 13 SCVs have gone down. The Roaches are refusing to die to these Hellions, although there is a Marauder now. The Marauder going to have a much better time with this, but by golly, the Mules are out. 16 workers down. It's 34 to 24 workers overall. Bomber has taken a serious amount of damage there. He didn't lose his natural base because nothing here could shoot up. These Lings are trying to get a surround on these units so they can kill them. The Friendly Fire Tank Splash takes down the Marauder. Hellion down there too. Friendly Fire. One more shot would be good. Accidental shot on the unbuildable plates. I guess maybe try to finish those off so that uh, misclicks are not a thing in the future. But yeah, I mean, at this point, it's 42 to 29 workers. Bly has been droning up. He's got eight drones in production right now. He's going for a lair. He did not kill Bomber, and this third base is here for Bomber, too. So this is really interesting stuff. <clears throat> Can Bomber come back? Or is Bomber just toast? That's why we're watching. We're watching for this particular reason. Is Bomber's on three bases. He lost a ton of SCVs, but he still has mules. Because it does have orbital commands on all three of his command centers right now. Which means he's able to basically catch up pretty darn fast here. It is going to be a race car mech. So I think uh, Bly got a good sense of that when he saw the three factories here. When he was attacking a few minutes ago. So he should be expecting Cyclones and Hellions and Hellbats and whatnot. Man. Sorry, my voice is a little bit ragged out. I went to a um, big football game last weekend. Woo! Actually, at this point of casting, it was two days ago. So a lot of cheering, a lot of yelling. And then cast a bunch of StarCraft for Africa, which, by the way, you should check me out there, too. Africa.com or AfricaTV.com slash Laughing Games. If you just follow me on Twitter or Facebook or here on Discord, you'll see when I'm going live for that. I'm casting live stuff, guys. We're getting Dongre Goo in these things. We're talking about True. We're talking about whoop, Parting. We're talking about MC. We're talking about Solar. Like, we're talking about some big Korean names you guys would love to see. So, check it out. Check it out for sure. And actually, probably saw a YouTube video that I posted last Saturday saying that I'm going with uh, live with that too. So, pretty good stuff. All right. Here comes the race car mech. We're looking at Hellions. We're looking at Cyclones. We're looking at Roaches. Trying to just kind of focus down the Cyclones here. Because the Cyclones are the concern the Hellions are not. The Hellions are there to deal with any Lings that try to show up, but the Cyclones are the things that are actually dealing the damage and taking down bases and whatnot. So it is a symbiotic relationship, but the Cyclones are more important. If all the Hellions die, it's not as big a deal for Bomber as if all the Cyclones die. We've got our Nidus coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Bly is going for a three-base Nidus attack. Galil Reconstitution is just about done for him. And what does he have in this Nidus? Everything. He has everything in this Nidus. There's no... Response from Bomber, Lings, and Roaches cruising into the main base. Oh, this is so bad. Denies all of the mining here at the main base for some time. And, okay, not as long as I thought it was going to be, but the Cyclone versus Roach game is not very good. Additional stream of Roaches coming in here. Their armor supply is 65 to 45. Nice advantage for Blind. A lot of these are Roaches. A lot of these are going to lose their effectiveness over time, but oh, a free tank. In the mix there, too, and that's a good game. A sneaky two for game number one is over. Bly takes game number one off of Bomber here, looking really, really confident doing it as well. Just the early aggression gets the Lings in, then gets the Roaches and Lings and then gets more Roaches in by way of Nidus Worm. He makes the second Nidus Worm just in case the first one dies, I suppose. But yeah, Bomber was just too greedy. It was just too greedy against what Bly was going for. I'm not sure he checked the saturation on the third base before that first attack came. And they tried to make up for the fact that they lost a ton of workers by going for a quick third base. We just didn't have enough. Um, and then, yeah, Bly just had more than he did. Had more workers than he did. Had a bigger army than he did. And got the win. So let's see what game two has in store for us. We'll be right back. All right. Sneaky two for game number two between Bly and Bomber. We'll be on Cyber Forest. Yeah, it's the old map pool, but I think we're good with that. Top left, it is the blue Zerg player, Bly. Bottom right, we got Bomber. He's red and he is Terran. I'm telling you, he did not expect that. He definitely did not expect that from Bly. And uh, yeah, Bly is unpredictable, so. <laughs> Man, I like Bly a lot. All right, what are we looking at here today? Ladies and gentlemen, for game number two, anything different from Bomber? Nah, he's not going for a proxy. 
He's trying to play it straight up. He's trying to make sure that he can handle Zergs today. These pesky, pesky EU Zergs. Of which there seem like there are like 20 of them that are just at professional level. And ready to go at all times. And maybe they're not going to win BlizzCon unless you're Serral. But they're going to make you work for it for sure if you come up against them in those earlier rounds. Bly again going for the hatch first play. Droning up real, real good. Going to go for that 18 gas and that 17 pool as is tradition here in StarCraft 2. And yeah, so far so good. I got to say, Barrick's on the way here from Bomber. And he's probably going to go for a Reaper based on that rally point again. So this Reaper expand has been a thing for years at this point. And it's what he knows and it's what he's comfortable with. And it's what most Terrans do anyway. So there's nothing really different to do. It's either proxy. Like your options as Terran are one racks expand, proxy two or three racks, or command center first. Like other things just don't make any sense. Uh, I guess you could go Marine first too. Marine first instead of Reaper with the one racks expand. But those are your options, it seems like. Anyway, Reaper's name is Doom Guy. After taking on hordes of demons in a distant solar system, Doom Guy stepped into a portal, warping him to the Caprulu sector, where he killed a large swarm of Zerg with his bare hands and a shotgun, thinking they were a new type of demons. When Menk saw his proficiency at killing, at killing, he convinced Doom Guy to get in a Reaper suit and armor with new guns, performance enhancing drugs, and a promise of killing more demons for the Dominion army in the form of the Zerg. So, yeah, Doom Guy is in this Reaper suit now. He is pretty scary, man. Known to kill just huge numbers of demons and evil. So four lings on the way. Got queens coming in here too. Speed getting started at two minutes. And the reaper is going to show up. There will be lings here to defend. So the reaper this time took the gamble. And it didn't punish him anyway. I don't know that he really got anything for this. But going to try to bruise all of these drones. And then finish off. Ooh, nice job. Sporing that one. Sporing that one is what you got to do. Where are the zerglings? Wow, so he just sent the Zerglings across and said the Queen can handle this when the Queen shows up. We're fine. The Lings are going to get across the map if the Reaper's out of bounds. But look, the Reaper ah doesn't need to be here because the Command Center is done. So this SAV might end up dead. Or could just hop inside, except for the fact that it's upgrading to Orbital Command, so never mind. Yeah, this is much better. This is a better opening for Bomber. He's not going to lose anything. No delay on the Command Center. In fact, Bly's just going to lose these Lings annoyingly. He's trying to prevent that from happening, but... Didn't work out. Reaper comes all the way home. And gets a couple kills on those Zerglings. <clears throat> Alright. So Bly's third base actually should have been started by now. Which indicates we're going to see a two base and something out of this dude. That's a lair. That is another gas. Yeah, man. Where's your third? This is the game you got to play if you're Terran. You got to scout the Zerg to see how, uh, how aggressively he expands. How many gases he takes. This is a lot of gas, man. He's not saturating that yet, which makes me worried about whatever he's planning on doing. Is it going to work? There we go. Three on that extractor. Another. It's, is this two base Muta? This is not like a two base throw Travager. You don't need this much gas for that, I don't think. This has got to be like a two base Muta. Man, hearkening back to the days. Heart of the Swarm had a bunch of this. Brood War has a bunch of this too. Terran, uh, Terran players. From the Brood War days and the current Brood War days know what I'm talking about. So the Overlord scouts in, says there's a Viking and Hellions and a Marauder with Concussive Shell on the way. Oh, that is a wrong... Yep, that's a Spire. That is a bad tell from Bomber. If he's going Marauders with Concussive Shell, he's investing a lot into units that are not going to help against these Mutalisks. He hasn't scanned because I know Terran players are like, if you scan, it's 300 resources you're losing from not throwing down a Mule instead. And that kills you in the mid-game, but man... Not knowing this is Mutalisks is also going to kill you in the mid-game. So it's kind of like pick your poison, huh? Take a gamble. Take a risk. Ah, StarCraft is a hard game. All right, what do we got here? We're going to go for a Marauder Hellion attack here. There are going to be Queens. There are going to be Zerglings. There are not going to be any Roaches at all. And a couple Spines coming up, too. So he knows what he's dealing with. The Overlord did see enough to be prepared for some kind of an early attack out of Bomber. And he was not wrong to do so. So here come the Hellions. There are so many Queens here, though. Hellbats. Ready to rock. Can the Queens hang on? Spinecrawler going to be pretty useful here. Queen getting transfused. Spinecrawler stabbing away as best he can. Link's actually getting a surround on these outside Hellions. Or Hellbats. And trying to kill them. But actually does end up killing one of them. But not very many otherwise. This Spinecrawler doing some work. Queen's putting in some work there, too. Holding off. Holding off. And then once the danger has passed, six Lings. Or six Mutalisks are in production, and Bomber has literally two Marines, three Marines for anti-air right now. He is in full macro mode, getting a third base up. What he needed to do was scout this 
Scout the lack of a third from Bly. Recognize this is a two-basing Zerg. There's no reason for him to be on two bases unless he's rushing something at you. The fact that you saw no roaches, it was only lings and queens defending, indicates it's going to be mutalisks. So Bomber is not reading this properly at all. The muta count continues to skyrocket here. There are nine of them with two more in production. It's going to be a total of 11. And there's just no answer. He's making tanks. He's making stim. We're working on another barracks here, which is going to help, or it could help, except for the fact that you will need more marines than this. So not even bothering with it, Viking. He's like, we're just here to kill your marines, and then everything else dies. I mean, missile turrets are coming up, but it's way too late for that. And that's your good game. So Bly, in two pretty convincing victories, takes down Bomber. Bomber is not quite back in game shape yet. And again, that last game came entirely down to scouting. Entirely down to scouting. He just didn't know. He didn't know there wasn't a third base. Right? If you look at him... Yeah, he doesn't know. He isn't really scattered over this way um, at all, period. So I think he assumed there was a third, which is something that I do, but Bomber shouldn't make that mistake. But yeah, two base Muta, which again is weird. You don't see it a lot, okay? But <laughs> you got to be scouting and preparing for it. Otherwise, I'm just, I'm really surprised that Bomber came up here and saw no roaches at all. I guess maybe if he assumed there was a third over here, then it would make sense. So that's it. He just didn't know there wasn't a third, and that's what killed him. So nice done. So not too, nothing too crazy here on our sneaky two fur between Vly and Bomber, showing Vly uh, being assertive and aggressive as he always is, and Bomber not quite able to hang right now. But hopefully he'll get better. Hopefully he can improve back up to where he was and give Vly some better matches next time they match up. But anyway, that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.